Class 11 Hornbill Chapter 1 The Portrait of a Lady by Khushwan Singh Khushwan Singh was an Indian novelist, lawyer, politician and a journalist. He was best known for his agnosticism, humor, easy narrative style and love for poetry. A few of his famous works include A Train to Pakistan Delhi a novel and history of the six about the text Kushwan Singh primarily writes about his perceptions and interactions with places and people he has come in contact with this text is autobiographical in nature and it describes the author's association with his grandmother and changes that come about in their relationship it is a loving tribute from a grandson to his grandmother where he reminisces about the emotional bond he shared with her now look at the title it is the portrait of a lady the two key words used in the title are portrait and lady The word portrait means a painting or picture but here it refers to a written description of someone and that someone is the author's grandmother thus the author graphically describes the person and personality of his grandmother who had all the attributes of a lady now let us begin with an in detail explanation of the text Glossary has been provided for your better understanding of the text. It is advised that you read the paragraph and then listen to the recording. Let us begin with the first paragraph. Here the author talks about his grandmother. He had known her for the past 20 years and she had always been old and wrinkled. It was hard to believe that she was once young and pretty and had a husband. In the next few lines the author talks about his grandfather whose portrait hung on the wall in which he wore loose fitted clothes a turban and had a long white colored beard that reached his chest he also appeared very old and the author thought that he was someone who could have many grandchildren but not a wife or children The author could never imagine that once his grandmother was young and pretty and thus could not connect to the idea. She used to tell him about her childhood memories like the games she used to play as a child. He found these stories illogical and ungraceful because it was beyond his imagination to think that grandmother was once a child and played such games. He thought that her life's stories were like the other moral stories which she used to tell them. A point to be noted in this paragraph is the grandfather's portrait is a static one whereas the grandmother's portrait was a dynamic one. It is a painter's rendition of the grandfather which depicts only his physical traits. On the other hand the grandmother's portrait refers to her pen picture which depicts her physical as well as emotional characteristics In the next paragraph the author has described the physical appearance of his grandmother His grandmother was short fat slightly bent in posture and her face had lots of wrinkles She seemed old and had been the same for the past 20 years. According to the author, she was beautiful but not pretty because of her appearance. She walked around the house in no quiet way, wearing spotless white clothes with beads of rosary hanging from one hand and the other hand rested on her back for support. She had silver colored hair that is white hair which was not neatly combed and disorganized she was constantly chanting prayers making use of a simile the author compares her to the winter landscape in the mountains which has a peaceful and calm feel she was thus a life example of a pure white peace emitting entity
Thus, the divine and spiritual essence of her heart made her beautiful despite not being pretty. The trajectory of the relationship between the narrator and his grandmother may be traced through the three phases or stages of their life which may be seen as symptomatic of the transformation which the relationship underwent. Now, the next paragraph describes the first phase of the relationship when the author lived with her in the village and they were good friends. His parents left him with her to settle in the city. The author's grandmother used to wake him up every morning and get him ready for school. She would recite her morning prayers while she bathed and dressed him up and he loved her voice but would not try to memorize a word of what she spoke. She would make his things ready like a wooden slate, a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen. He would eat a thick stale chapati with butter and sugar spread on it. They both used to walk to school and his grandmother carried several stale chapatis with her to feed the village dogs. His grandmother would accompany him to the school as it was attached to the temple. On one side, he would sit in the veranda with other children, would sing the alphabet and prayer in the chorus. On the other hand, she would sit in the temple to read the scriptures. After finishing, they would walk back home together. The village dogs would meet them at the temple door and follow them to their home, growling and fighting with each other for the stale chapatis that were fed to them. The next paragraph describes the second phase of their relationship when his parents got settled in the city and called them. That was the turning point of his friendship with his grandmother. They shared the same room, but she no longer would give him company to his school. He started going to an English medium school in a motor bus. There were no dogs in the streets whom she could feed as she did in the village, so she started feeding sparrows in the veranda of their house. As the years passed in the city, their interaction reduced. For some time, she continued to wake him up and would get him ready for school. She would ask him what he had learned in the school that day. The scientific terminology and English words made her unhappy. As she didn't know the language, she could not help him with the lessons. As his new school never taught him about God and religious scriptures, this made her sad. She did not approve of such an education. When she came to know that he was getting music lessons, it disturbed her because, according to her, music was indecent and it was an art for the beggars and not for those belonging to decent families. She didn't like that he learned music and thus she stopped talking to him after that. Thus, the second phase of their relationship can be marked by a shift in the city and a consequent change in the manner in which time and space could be defined. The replacement of the religious teaching with contemporary education in western tongue and introduction of music distressed the grandmother. She expressed her disapproval by drifting away from the narrator. As the author went to university, he had a room of his own. Thus, the common link of their friendship that the grandson shared with the grandmother they had when they shared the room was changed now and thus his friendship with her ended. The grandmother became isolated and rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. While spinning, she continued to recite her prayers. In the afternoon, she used to feed sparrows in the veranda. The birds would gather around her. Some sat near her, some on her legs, some on her shoulders and few on her head. A veritable bedlam of chirrupings here refers to the noise and confusion caused by the chirrupings of the sparrows. But 
she never showed them away she was the happiest in that half an hour during the whole day when the author decided to go abroad for further studies he believed it would be the last time he would see her as he would be gone for five long years at the station she held him tightly and kissed his forehead and he thought it was the last physical contact with her but that wasn't so when he came back after 5 years she came to meet him at the station she looked just the way she did 5 long years ago she held him again in her arms and was still reciting her prayers frivolous rebukes here in this paragraph refers to the lighthearted affectionate scolding thus her happiest moments were with the sparrows in the evening she didn't follow her regular routine of praying she collected a few women from the neighborhood got an old drum and started singing the homecoming of warriors the whole family persuaded her to stop as she might get ill due to exhaustion the next morning she fell ill it was mild fever and the doctors told them that it would go away but she took it differently according to her she would die soon as her end was near she started chanting prayers as she didn't want to waste her last hours in talking to anyone it is evident that she fought with death for 5 years to meet the narrator and died peacefully after fulfilling her wish the family protested tried to stop her but she lay peacefully on her bed chanting prayers and doing her beads suddenly she stopped and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers a calm pale appearance spread on her face and she died the family lifted her from the bed laid her on the ground wrapped her with a red colored cloth thousands of sparrows sat silently near her the author's mother fetched some bread for the birds but they didn't eat any they flew away later as the family carried the dead body the sweeper removed the crumbs the next morning this way the sparrows mourned the death of their benefactor that is grandmother through utter silence